This is fascinating. This is a new dish. So, real oranges. Made with real orange sauce? Real oranges. Yo, yeah, it's good. It's fire. <laughs> And we might be standing in front of what is the best American Chinese takeout in the world right now. Whoa. A few months ago, we made a video about how a lot of Chinese restaurants in America are closing down, particularly the ones who focus on American Chinese cuisine, such as Orange Chicken, General So. Between the older generation retiring and the younger generation moving into the professional field and not wanting to take those businesses over, there's a void in the market. So here in New York City, the people of Junza Kitchen have come up with nice day Chinese takeout, which is trying to save the American Chinese cuisine while refreshing it. All right, you guys, we are gonna be heading in and talking to the ownership, what their vision is, trying all the dishes, and see how they're bringing orange chicken and General Sows into 2020. Let's, Let's go. go. tell you that they got a modern design that still pays homage to the old school American Chinese takeout. Let's go into the back. We're going to go talk to the head chef, Lucas. Yo, what's good? What's up, man? What's up? How's Yo, it going? What are we looking at, man? This is a cuisine that we're all familiar with, For sure. but as a particularly Chinese Americans, we find it hard to voice that. That's the issue, right? Why shouldn't they be ashamed? Okay, here's the thing, right? I start really, really trying to think of Chinese food as something that is worth studying and worth respecting. Even if everyone think that Chinese food is not delicious, that's like totally not true. American Chinese food is regional Chinese cuisine and is as authentic as any Chinese food is supposed to be. Whoa! Whoa. That's no, it's coming real. from a Chinese chef. That's no. a hot take. American Chinese food is its own province. It should be considered a provincial cuisine. It's exactly. regional cuisine. It's regional. regional Chinese cuisine, man. So Anthony, I was at this Dominican deli and they had the crispy rice, like a bow tie bun. So they eat the bottom of the crispy rice, kind of like how Cantonese also eat bow tie bun, which is out of the clay pot, and the rice is crispy on the edge. Like, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's it. All right, you guys, we are here looking at round one at Nice Day Chinese Takeout. Ooh. These are all very classic, right? Classic, the way they're supposed to be. There are thousands and thousands of Chinese families that have been making this food for hundreds of years. You don't want to disrespect it, you know? Trying to learn this stuff, figure it out. Trying to get people right. like, pay attention. Chinese American yeah. food is awesome. And the prices here are not crazy, not overpriced American Chinese food. This is doing it justice. I noticed that we don't have a place we're eating out of Chinese go takeout on, boxes, on, on. but I am fanning mine out like a plate. Have I know you, you see on the internet. I haven't seen it anywhere else. You, you haven't it. seen it in person. All right. You can see the food better, so. Okay. So we got vegan spring rolls. Is it vegan? Yeah, they're vegan. This is good. What goes into a good spring roll? Onion, celery, carrots, a oh, yeah. little bit of glass noodle for texture. That's it. Use proper ingredients and fry it fresh. It's not that you're reinventing American Chinese food. You're just doing it the right way. Yeah, that's it. I think the and glass the noodles is the only ingredient here that I probably wouldn't find in a regular spring roll. Real quick, what's the difference between a spring roll and an egg roll? Egg rolls are bigger, and usually egg rolls have meat in it. These are appetizers. And shake shake shrimp. I guess that's the one that needs a little bit of action. This is what the internet is going crazy for. A lot of the times when you get fried food delivered, it's just not crispy by the time it gets to your door, and it's because they dress it in sauce. So what we like to do is we like to serve the shrimp as is, fried, sauce on the side, pour the sauce in, shake it up, all the flavors there. It's crispy by the time it gets okay. into your mouth. Shake, shake, shake shrimp. shrimp. This is a new dish. At first I was like, what, you got walnut shrimp? But it's not. That is a good mm. dish. So, only difference, real oranges. Made with real orange sauce? Real oranges. Good, yeah, good. It has a really nice tang to it. Yeah. Wow. Sweet and sour, a little bit of tang, a little bit of sweetness. That's what this dish is all about. Um, we got some vegetable dumplings over here um, with mushroom and glass noodles. So that doesn't have meat either? That doesn't have meat okay. either. Okay. Steamed veggie dumplings. <laughs> Right, I want to say these look a little bit more authentic than an average. We have really great friends over in New Jersey that make our dumplings for us. And they make it with a really, really nice fresh skin. Yo, I like that sauce. What's that sauce? Yo, these dumplings are good. Considering they have no meat, it's only, what, glass noodles and, and ear uh, mushrooms? Yeah, wood ear mushrooms. Wood ear mushrooms. And shiitake, that's it. We got chicken wings, extra large chicken wings. On to something that really makes this an American Chinese spot, which is the chicken wings. Like that's an NY city. style. That's, that's an NY, NY style. Chinese, it is, yeah. It is. 
Right. Look at this XL wing. The crust is super crispy. This batter stays crispier longer than most other batters. XL, XL chicken, chicken wings. Mmm. It definitely does still remind you of those Chinese American spots. You just want to do the chicken wing that they always love, but do it properly. All right, Lucas, here's an idea for our chicken feet. I'm gonna have to think about that one. <laughs> All right, part two, round one. Lucas, what are we looking at? We got kung pao chicken, chicken and broccoli, classic. German style chicken and the sweet and sour chicken. Wow, pour okay. the sweet and sour sauce over. You take inspiration from those sort of like original Chinese recipes in order to learn how to make this American Chinese sweet and sour chicken a little bit better. You make it a little bit tastier. Sweet, sweet and sour, sour chicken. chicken. No, not good. And the best part is actually the oh. onions and the peppers on top. They're using chicken thigh and not just breast meat. We know chicken the chicken thigh, thigh is better. better. It's better meat. We always want to see what the customer says. We want to get the customer feedback because if they tell us that, hey, you know what? I grew up in this neighborhood and I actually had Chinese food that was like this, that helps us inform the next iteration of these dishes, right? Okay. Let's right. get into this. General Tso's. No spot really makes General Tso's the same. Whoa. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I see why the sauce is proprietary. Yeah. Wow. Savory, a little garlicky. Very garlicky. I love that. One week, we had ordered 12 different versions of General House Chicken from just to figure out what the commonality is. What was the commonality? The best ones always had a really nice fry on the chicken that wasn't too thick. Of course, it's being soggy, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, at the tail end of round one, this chicken broccoli looks different. This Kung Pao looks more like Kung Pao. This looks different. There's Chinese American Kung Pao chicken, and then there's the Sichuan version of Kung Pao chicken, right? More brown, and that's what people think of like the authentic version. When you're designing the dish, the question is like, how do you bring both of them together, the good parts of both, uh, and then make a dish that everyone's gonna be happy with? This is not Kung Pao chicken. This is just Kung Pao. You can't even say it in Chinese. Don't say it with the correct pronunciation. Yeah, just, yeah. it's Kung Pao. Oh man, this actually looks. So the deep flavor, I feel like, is a little bit more authentic and then the cuts of chicken are more authentic, as in diced chicken thigh, but it still kind of has this sweetness yeah. that is more of the American Chinese. It's not about replacing what was before, it's about like evolving, you know? This is what I had for lunch before you guys got here. Before you guys found it necessary to have this discussion of the evolution of American Chinese food, who was having it? 1983 Panda Express, 1993 P.F. Chang's. Those are the people that brought Chinese food to all over the world, including all over the U.S., and they showed people what the standard was, right? I don't know, I love Panda Express. Here's the thing, Chinese American food didn't really need chains for a long time, because there are Chinese places everywhere. And you can get very similar sesame chicken in Arizona as you do in New York. You gotta preserve that heritage, right? The stories are good, the food is delicious. You just have to, you have to honor that tradition. Last but not least, for round one, we got chicken and brat. Chicken thigh is more flavorful. It absorbs marinade in a, in, in a more delicious way, and I think it cooks better. Chicken, chicken and brat. So That's good with the chicken crazy. thigh. So juicy, right? People who order chicken broccoli, they know what they want. You don't want to screw it up for them. So how were you guys able to recreate the umami with high quality dark soy sauce and just like a proper cooking and the proper thickening of the sauce? And David, what was your favorite chicken dish? It was the General Sows. Wow. Yeah. Hey, 50 iterations in. Wow. Well, I mean, what? You gotta I'm get proud. it right there. Proud I mean, of my team. All right. So for me, it was definitely I would say sweet and sour chicken, and then the Kung Pao G Ding. I can't wait to get to round two. All right, round two here at Nice Day Chinese Takeout. Mapo tofu, shrimp with lobster sauce, Mongolian beef. Shrimp fried rice, chicken chow mein, beef lo mein. Wow, Ooh. okay. Tell us about this fried rice. It's really simple. It doesn't have soy sauce, none of, like nothing extra in here. It's just rice, aromatics, and a little bit of egg. Lucas, how is it like cooking fried rice on a flat pan versus a wok? So this is called golden fried rice. The type of fried rice that's really good for cooking on the flat top. You can still get that wok hay feeling because of how hot the griddle is. Right. You just gotta cook at a very high temperature. Fried rice often isn't just eaten alone, right? It's like the backbone to like your savory entrees. So you kind of want it to be like nice and simple, but still flavorful. Okay. Yeah, it's good. It's dry. I see what you're saying about this being able to be uh, how stuff put over it. Yeah. So this Mapo is a hybrid. You got a Sichuan version, you got a Cantonese version. So we had to design a Mapo tofu that was in between, that was got a little bit of that Sichuan spice, but has the savory notes of the Cantonese version. Wow. So you're trying to satisfy the two different styles of Mapo exactly. by giving them the in-between. Mapo, Mapo tofu. tofu. I love Mapo tofu. I love how it's misunderstood. Oh, it's not too spicy, a little bit of kick. Our mapo is mostly savory. It's not too spicy, it doesn't have that layer of oil over the top. It's also vegan, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have any like minced beef or anything in there. Yo, this is good. This is a very much a Chinese takeout plate right now. 
moving up. This is a crown jewel right here. Yeah. Shrimp with lobster sauce. So you see this egg white sort of egg drop inside of there. You got the peas, nice bright peas like jade. And then you got this like beautiful poached shrimp. You just gotta try it. Yeah, try it. Yo, you know I, what? The way you talk about American Chinese food, let me, yeah. the way you talk about it, Lucas. I am sick of the disrespect of Chinese American food. Shrimp, shrimp with, with the lobster, lobster sauce. sauce. Actually, I might even like it over the white rice. Really lets the shrimp shine. Super nice, super mm. great. Mm. Yeah, shrimp with the lobster sauce, that's where it's at. When I was growing up, I rejected American Chinese food. But yeah, like I've like kind of come back to it over these years. They don't serve it at every American Chinese restaurant, but everyone in the kitchen, the whole team here at Nice Day, we love this dish. Dude, I'm excited to get this chow mein. It's chow mein uh, first. This is lo mein. Lo mein is the big one. All right, yep. beef lo mein. Right. Mm. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's that's good, dog. That's good, dog. Yeah. It reminds me of the best plate I ever made at Mongolian Grill, but yes. never made again. Yes. I love the beef that you guys are using here. It's flank steak. You can still see the graininess. Noodles have to be cooked properly. You want nice aromatics, so that means that you got garlic, ginger, scallion, and the sauce, but you also got like peppers, in this case, Chinese chives, and bean sprouts and onions. It's just a good medley, and everything has to like work together, you know? You can still see that the noodles, nice and bouncy. All right, guys, let's try this uh, chow mein. I like the chow mein because it's lighter than the lo mein, you know? Chicken, Chicken chow, chow mein. mein. You kept this pretty true. There is some really authentic like chow mein, like the breakfast chow mein that you get yeah. at the Hong Kong spots. For sure. How is this different? So the sauce is very similar. So you got dark soy sauce, you got a little bit of um, oyster sauce in there. The only difference here in an American Chinese context is that we add you know, chicken, we add the vegetables in there so that it becomes a little bit more of an entree so you can eat mm. it on its own. American Chinese food is authentic, it's just not traditional. All right, Mongolian beef. Mongolian beef. The Mongolian beef, man. This looks like top quality beef. Lang steak, not over corn starched. Mongolian, Mongolian beef. beef. Yo, this is good. There's no sugar in here. All the sweetness comes from onions. So if you cook onions properly, and Chinese chives and all those things, you know you can hit those flavor notes without adding you know, refined sugar when you don't need to add mm. refined sugar. This is one of our most popular dishes yeah. here at Nice Day Chinese. Wow, we have the orange chicken, the classic, and the beef and broccoli. It's a baseline dish. Every Chinese American restaurant needs one. Orange, orange chicken. chicken. Mm. That's what goes in here, real oranges. There's actually a little bit of bitterness, but a lot of sweetness and a lot of citrus. The sweetness in this is from oranges, and we also throw a little bit of pineapple juice in there. And last but not least, the classic beef and broccoli. I mean, if you guys are on a low carb diet, you just get the broccoli and chicken or broccoli and beef, oh, and that's it. Rice. Beef and broccoli. They have a whole Timberland colorway yeah, based off beef and brock. I noticed the broccoli is not slimy. So we're using American broccoli instead of Chinese broccoli because it's Chinese American food. That's our main reference point. For me, out of round two, my favorite was the mapo tofu and the lo mein. I did not expect you to say that. You didn't expect me to say that? No, I, I said that. that. I actually, I was gonna say the orange chicken, very addictive here. I feel like, Lucas, you've thought a lot about Chinese food. What do you gotta say to ABCs out there who are kinda like 50-50 on this food, you know? You are one of the few young people taking it super seriously. I'm just the new kid doing yeah. this. Well, maybe Nice Day can be a gateway into people rethinking Chinese American food, right? Thinking that this food is worth eating here, but it's also worth exploring in your own neighborhood. What's one dish you would like to serve in the future? Hopefully. Can I throw one out there for you? What are you thinking? Almond chicken. Whoa. Almond chicken was designed, I believe, for a southern market. I really like that dish. Thank you so much for watching this very special episode of Fun Bros Food. Huge shout out to Lucas Sin. Yo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for dropping all that knowledge. In the comments down below, let us know what your favorite Chinese American dish is of all time. Shout out to Nice Day, shout out to Lucas, and until next time, we out. Peace. You guys gotta meet my buddy Andrew later. Andrew uh, was born in a Chinese American restaurant. The first time I met his dad, he was like talking to me about the need to preserve his general style sauce. Gotta keep serving Chinese food to the Americans, you gotta keep doing it. Right, and I was right, like, right. oh, there's so much to learn.